Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Easter Thank you for joining us today. We are on the second Sunday after Easter as we continue our Easter celebration. Um, You can follow along on the screens. We have a Thanksgiving for baptism to begin begin our service. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. We give you thanks, O God, for the bidding you created us in your image and planted us in the well-watered garden. You promised pools of water for the parched and gave us water for the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus, watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. Salvation through water. For the water is this font. And for all the water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty. And give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. Now and forever. We'll continue with hymn number 135. The strife is over, the battle is done, verses 1 through 4. I'll ask you to please rise and we'll begin continue our worship on the screen or on page 78 in the front of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. 
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's power, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I just realized that I tethered myself. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter. Peter has been arrested for proclaiming the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection. His response to the charges of the high priest summarizes the early church's proclamation of forgiveness of sins through repentance. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council and the high priest questioning them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you have determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses, witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Here ends the reading. Please join me in reading responsibly from Psalm 118. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has come become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord. Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us from a possession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading comes from the book of Revelation, the first chapter. The book of Revelation recounts a mystical vision of the risen Christ experienced by a Christian prophet named John. Here he describes Christ as a timeless redeemer, the beginning, the present, and the end of all time. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. On his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here ends the reading. I invite you to please stand for the gospel acclamation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. The unprecedented events of the day of resurrection continue as the risen Jesus appears to his fearful disciples. A week later, after Thomas worships Jesus, he pronounces that the blessings of the resurrection are also for those who have not seen and yet believe. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas this time was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in your side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. You have a commentary I like to follow in preparing for Sunday morning. And it's called Lectionary Lab, and it's put out by two babas and a Bible, two Southern Lutheran pastors. But the question they started off with their thoughts for this week is, how do you picture the church? It's a pretty interesting question. When you close your eyes and think of church, what comes to mind? Is it this place with all the pews and the cross, the altar, the candles, the baptismal font and the pulpit up front? Or do you get more extravagant and you think about the crystal cathedral or one of the grand basilicas? Or for those of you who like going to camp, do you picture the campfire and everybody gathered around with a guitar? We have many different images of church. And I have to admit, the image we get this morning is usually not the first one that comes to mind. Jesus' disciples behind locked doors, afraid that anybody's going to come and knock on them and visit them and bring them harm. Here they are, that first Sunday, hiding in this locked room, afraid of what's going to happen, confused by the fact that they have heard that Jesus' body is gone. And some are saying that he has been raised, but not understanding what this means. We find these first disciples stuck together, not knowing what to do, and afraid. There is no rejoicing. There is no hymns of praise. Probably prayers of help, for aid, for protection. Not a very exciting Easter morning. But then in the midst of that, something changes. Jesus appears in the presence of them and says peace be with you a greeting to share God's peace with them yeah I know sometimes we like to say Thomas he's the doubter but here we have the other disciples staring at Jesus right in the face and until he shows them his hands and his side they still aren't sure it's real but once they too get 
to see his side and his hands, the scars on his body. Then they begin rejoicing. And Jesus again begins with, Peace be with you. And then, he served, then he said, As my Father has sent me, so I send you. Yeah, I think what a transformation for the beginning of the service where everybody's hiding, hoping that nobody's going to notice them. Yeah. At some point, I'm going to start walking down the aisles again and get that feeling. To having Jesus tell them, I am sending you out, out into that world that crucified me, out into the world that rejected me. And I'm sending you out there because God first sent me. But how that first church changed in the midst of that visit. And then Jesus breathed on them the Holy Spirit and gave them the power to forgive sins or retain sins. I always find this one amazing. Jesus gives us as a church the ability to proclaim to each other that your sins are truly forgiven. Martin Luther reminds us again and again that what, he's, what Jesus says is so. So when you hear the words, you are forgiven, and you're gathered here in church, you can know that these words are truly for you. That first Easter, Jesus changed the church from being one that was afraid and hiding to being one that went out into the world proclaiming forgiveness, proclaiming the good news that Jesus has come to change the world. But of course, every church needs to have some spice in it, a little bit of something to make it all the rumors go around well. Thomas wasn't there. Thomas was out doing something, you know, visiting a friend, getting food, gathering information. It doesn't tell us. And he comes back, and all the other disciples are so excited because they have seen Jesus, and he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think wild and crazy things I could say that would be like that. It'd be like, the Vikings won the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, it's about the response I imagine Thomas having. <laughs> yeah, right, that doesn't happen. Unless I see it with my own eyes, unless I can hit that replay button and see for sure, I won't believe it happened. So here we have Thomas and the other disciples believing different things, understanding different things. But again, for me, the amazing part is a week later, they are all together in that room. They are still realizing that they are still disciples, brothers and sisters in Christ. And they are still together. But this time, Thomas is with them when Jesus shows up. And Thomas sees Jesus. Doesn't have to touch his hands. Doesn't have to put his hand in his side. His response is, my Lord and my God. You can picture the overwhelming feeling in Thomas. He's had a week to hear the stories, to digest them, to understand them. So that his reaction is different than what the other disciples were. His first reaction is to realize that Jesus is his Lord and God. The awe that was going through Thomas at that moment, realizing that he was truly in the presence of God. I don't know if you've felt those times in your life where everything just makes you feel like God is truly here. God is truly beside me. And Thomas had that awe-filled moment I almost picture him getting down on his knees, looking up with awe at Jesus, saying, my Lord and my God. This word changes the way that everybody sees Jesus. He's no longer the teacher, no longer the resurrected friend. He is the Messiah, 
He is the Lord. He is God. And Thomas has found that out through listening to the first disciple, the other disciples and then finally seeing Jesus. But the other amazing part of this passage is you're in it. I don't know if you ever realize that you are in the Bible. Or Jesus speaking directly to you. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Yeah, I did a survey at, at my service at the nursing home to see how many were around when Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. yeah nobody raised their hands. Yeah. You know, I always tell my daughters, I'm old enough to uh, remember the rolling mammoth, but not the dinosaurs. You know, but we weren't there. We didn't see Jesus risen from the dead with those first disciples. But yet we have come to believe. We have come to believe because the stories that the disciples told about their experience with Jesus was first told to somebody else. And then to somebody else, to somebody else. And finally, until it got to one of our ancestors, who then told it to our grandparents and our parents, and finally to us, so that we may believe this Easter story that Christ is our Lord and our God, that he was truly risen, and in him we do find life, as the gospel writer tells us. Not just life that is hanging on, not just life that hides out into a locked room, but life that goes out into the world and gives life. We give forgiveness. We give hope. We become the body of Christ this Easter to tell the world that he is risen and he is risen indeed. That all these things that happened are real. Not just 2,000 years ago, but for us today. We see the definition of church change to remind us it is to go out it is to be that life-giving light to the world. It is to be a people who are forgiving of those around us. To be loving to those near and far. Jesus rose that Sunday 2,000 years ago. A week later, Thomas saw him and declared, My Lord and my God. And that has defined us ever since as a people who go out sent to share this story, to proclaim this forgiveness of sins to all who can hear. And so we continue this Sunday and always with seeking the resurrection Lord who is and always among us. And for this we give thanks. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, which is hymn number 144, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
I'll invite you to please rise if you're able. Today we'll, use, we'll confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. We'll now receive the offering. Please be seated. Now set free from the captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, the people, and all in all creation. O Lord, who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy. Lord, renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection and life in the natural world, and watch over farmers and ranchers who care for it. God, in your mercy. Lord, direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention toward serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy. Children who cry out to you in need, wherever people are overcome by fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. We especially pray if your healing touch for Cheryl, Arlen, Faye, Alice, Steve, Gary, Helen, Lorelai, Ricky, Don, Shirley and Jim, Linda and Roger, Cheryl, Ricky, Mary, Brad and Misty, and all those we name in our, heart, name in our hearts. And Lord, we also pray for all those who are grieving this day. Give him your strength and your comfort. We especially pray for the family and friends of Annette Foster, Keith Wenzel, Elmer Brandt, and Marlis Peterson. God, in your mercy. Lord, we also pray for all those who are stuck in the midst of violence. 
Give them your hope and your comfort, especially pray for the people of Ukraine. God, in your mercy. Receive our Lord, inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. God, in your mercy. And to your mercy, O God, we respond to these prayers. Renew us by your life-giving Spirit, and through Jesus, life-giving Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements. The newsletter deadline is tomorrow, so if you have an article for that, please get it in. Um, this Wednesday, we'll have 9 o'clock worship at English, or, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock Bible study at English, and live stream. The Bible study will be at Country View at 1 o'clock, and confirmation will be here at English at 2.40. That will be our last confirmation class for this season. Next week, we have 8.30 service at St. Olaf, and Sunday school at St. Olaf, and we have 9 o'clock, or 10.30 service here, and 9 o'clock at our Savior's. Um, if you can keep um, in your prayers, the family and friends of Annette Foster. Her service will be here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Um, visitation will be tonight from 5 to 8 at the funeral home. Then on May 21st, there will be a come and go bridal shower for Stephanie Ancrum here at English. This is the last day of our Sunday school here at English, and our mission of the month is the Walnut Grove School Libraries, and so if you'd like to give a gift for them, that would be appreciated. Any other announcements? Well, then I invite you to please rise for the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the life living cornerstone, and the life giving Holy Spirit of adoption, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us close with hymn number 147 Alleluia, Jesus Lives, verses 1 through 4. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks.